Alright guys, time to cry back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Formula 1 News and Max Verstappen has explained why he didn't give any interviews to Drive to Survive for this season series, but also the Australian Grand Prix probably have announced some surprising tyre compounds for this year's race. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you are new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Let's just crack right on into things. Of course, there's all this stuff going on with Haas right now. We know that Mazepin's out of there. Who's going to be the replacement driver? Fittipaldi is definitely topping the list. It seems like I'm pretty sure they've confirmed that Fittipaldi is going to be there for the test and that well it seems like at least that the rumor has it right now they are going to confirm him as kind of the full-time driver with potentially going to change things out over time we'll see how it goes but um yeah obviously the sentiment as Jenna Fry points out here like to upgrade the driver's seat is a possibility but for now I believe Fittipaldi is going to be there for the testing in Bahrain and then of course going into the Grand Prix not long after that at all Pietro will be in the car it does seem right now rumor has it in the next few hours Fittipaldi is meant to be announced as the official driver of a has it will carry out at least the test in Bahrain, that being uh, Fittipaldi, of course. The American team is, however, looking at the possibility of later putting a more experienced driver in the car, including Giovinazzi that we looked at yesterday. So yeah, still definitely some possibilities on the table here for what Haas wants to do this year. I think it was also said elsewhere that Haas are definitely not going to sell their team. So for now, it's still it was set in stone how it's going to go. And of course, yeah, Prieto Fittipaldi seemingly is going to be the guy. Is he going to be there long term? I don't know. Definitely gives a little bit more flexibility. Despite the controversial circumstances over Mazepin's removal, most people are, you know, still relatively happy, I guess, to see him go and another driver come in. That's just how it is at the end of the day. But seemingly unfortunate news for Haas, because there was some images spotted, right, of all the teams setting up and getting ready to go here in Bahrain in just a few days' time for the next round of testing before the Grand Prix in just under two weeks' time at this point, and that seemingly there was some sort of issue with the cargo plane transporting the Haas F1 cars. So, you know, just running into a catalogue of issues right now, and yeah, apparently in Bahrain it's broken down in Istanbul. The freight is still stuck in London. I believe there was something like this that happened last season, going from, like, US to Mexico or something. There was some sort of issue with the transportation, but that affected a lot of teams. Apparently Haas are just the ones suffering the issues and that's the thing they spent of course the last couple of seasons really preparing this year's car with the intention hopefully that it's going to be somewhat more competitive. They had a really tough time at the first uh, first set of practice right the first set of testing like they were one of the teams alongside Alfa Romeo that really had a torrid time so many issues to deal with and if they can't get out here in time and they miss some of the testing it's just not going to be great for their drivers or for the team as a whole because a lot of teams right now are of course looking to bring many upgrades here into Bahrain and also just test things out. That's kind of the idea. Haas didn't get that much of an opportunity to do that. Didn't put many laps in, right? I think on one of the days, I must have been putting like nine maps. Schumacher didn't do any. Like um, as a team, I think they're the lowest total, maybe apart from Alfa Romeo, because um, they also had a pretty torrid time. But let's talk about this Drive to Survive stuff, because of course it's coming out in just a few days' time. This season, there's some people who have seen the first eight episodes. I believe there's ten episodes, and the last two, I believe, are still kind of to be confirmed. But some people have watched it already. They've given their feedback. Generally, doesn't seem to be quite as well received as some other seasons have been. And of course, usually they sit down with the drivers, discuss what they're thinking, base episodes around particular rivalries. Of course, like Lewis versus Max is going to be a main theme throughout the entirety of the episodes, but there's some episodes, of course, that will focus on different rivalries and dramas, and you know, some of these rivalries might just be concocted as sometimes Netflix like to do. Now, Max Verstappen was explaining why this season he elected not to really do any interviews with Drive to Survive and give them any of his insights personally, just because he feels like in previous seasons, they've taken things out of context to some degree and manipulated the way that well, words are being said. We know full well that sometimes they will just take snippets of you know, dialogue or something, or like um, you know, voiceover or radio communications that was not played at all in that particular moment. But they'll put it in anyway. They'll splice it in to make it seem like that happened in that particular moment. And this kind of, um, you know, cutting and pasting and taking things a little bit out of context, right? And maybe, well, Max Verstappen says one thing and they take the final half of the sentence and put that in, right? Because it kind of fixed the narrative they want to display. Therefore, Max is like, look, I'm not happy with this. I've decided not to actually do any of this stuff. Of course, they're still going to talk about him, right? And break down the season rivalry between Lewis and Max Verstappen. But, um, you know, I don't believe we're going to get to see any interviews from his personal perspective. You do interviews and you don't know what it's going to be used for. So, for example, in my first year, I gave interviews. But I know, of course, when I watched the, the series, well, I know when I said these things. And then they could use it on a different kind of footage. They would fake a lot of stuff. And for me, that as a driver, I don't look at it as a, as a fan. I think that's not correct. But I understand as a Netflix show, they want to make it more dramatic, you know, uh, for, for people. And make it look like it's like epic kind of battle where sometimes you know they faked a few like rivalries or whatever which they don't really exist so i decided to not be a part of it you know i didn't give any interviews after that anymore really um just because then there is nothing to show um there is nothing they can fake about you i'm anyway not really um just kind of let's say dramatic show kind of person um i just want facts and real 
things to happen. Don't blame him, honestly, at the end of the day. There has been some talk about what they're going to do with the future of Drive to Survive, because if it does turn out that this season's going to series is significantly worse than the previous ones, like, are they going to go down a different route? Because, of course, Formula One have to give Netflix access to be able to do this. They could potentially partner up with other sponsors, right? They could say, okay, instead of Netflix doing it, HBO are going to do it or something like that. I'm sure there's interest in a series like this, given the success it has had. And if Netflix aren't doing the killer job they have done, then maybe they'll move it on elsewhere. Like, um, there are some questions as to whether how many more seasons of this there will be as Drive to Survive, produced by Netflix. If it kind of continues down the trend, it seems to currently be going. And it's no real surprise that a lot of the drivers aren't particularly keen to give interviews, right? Given what we've seen in previous seasons and may well see in this season again as we go forwards. Let's dive into this then as we close out the video. Because, well, the tyre compounds that have been nominated by Pirelli for the first three Grand Prix of the season. So Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and Australia, of course, are the first three Grand Prix. And these are some very interesting tyre compounds, actually. I'm pretty sure last year, for the well, we didn't see any situation last year where they were kind of at split compounds as in there was a gap between some of the compounds selected. So the C1 tyre is the hardest one, the C5 is the softest compound possible, C1 is the hard, C2 is the medium, C3 is the soft in Bahrain, then in Saudi Arabia it goes C2, C3, C4. Pretty similar trend right to what we'd have seen last season as well. However in Australia they're now missing an entire, well instead of it going C2, C3, C4, they've now actually skipped them out and have the soft as kind of the C5 tyre instead. This is quite an interesting decision. People are suggesting could this potentially be coming down to the idea that um, you know, the Q2 rules for where if you qualify into Q3, the tyres that you used in Q2 are the tyres you have to start the race on. Now, um, I think there was some, the way it actually worked out in reality was different, I guess, to what the FAA expected, just because the top teams, their cars were so good anyway, they could afford to just use whatever tyre, right, and get through Q2, decide what they want to do, and then go to Q3 and put the softs on anyway. If anything, it just kind of affected the bottom teams that they kind of had to put the softs on. For example, if you're Williams or something, you've got George Russell in the car, you've probably got to put the softs on to try and get him into Q3, but then you've maybe got to start the race on a suboptimal compounds and therefore it's actually maybe better to just be P11 or P12 and not have to worry about that and choose the tyre you want to start on. And of course maybe part of the reason why they had all the, the compounds so tightly knit last year was because at least then it maybe, well, it lessens the impact of something like that that it has on the lower squads. However, this year that's not a concern and therefore this is what's going on in Australia. So a spokesperson for Pirelli told RacingNews365.com the decision is, was taken as we believe it's the best choice for the new asphalt and the new layout because that's the thing. Australia, the track has been heavily revised now for a much faster layout, so they've gone down two steps of compound separation for the media and soft tyre. Interesting decision, no doubt. This is the coming schedule over the coming weeks. Testing in Bahrain, drive to survive in just a few days' time, then the Bahrain, and then the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix right after that. So, well, a double header over the couple of weeks to finish out March. Exciting times in the Formula 1 world, no doubt. And I thought this was pretty cool. I saw here from ESPN Lewis's reaction to a fan giving him a painting. Pretty wholesome stuff, not gonna lie, but very much intrigued to get your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit a like button. Until the YouTube gods, this is a good video. I just like you should see it as well. And upgrade this channel as fast as it's humanly possible. Thanks for watching as always. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you next time.